Ubuntu 21.10 Impish Indri is out and it is packed with stunning new features like the all new GNOME 40. It also ships with a new package base, giving us a revamped user experience. That gives us two actively supported versions of Ubuntu to choose from. Ubuntu 20.04 LTS and the new 21.10. They both are very different from each other in how they look, how they behave, their support period, their target user base and many other things. So in this video, I'll be sharing the differences between them, comparing them in terms of performance, stability, software availability and help you decide which version of Ubuntu is best for you. I installed both Ubuntu 20.04 LTS and 21.10 on the same hardware to play with them and see how they stack up against each other. One being a long term support version supported till 2025 and the other being an interim release supported only for the next 9 months does make this comparison interesting. We'll also settle the debate of LTS versus non-LTS versions once and for all by objectively looking at both the systems. So let's jump right in and see if you should stick with Ubuntu 20.04 LTS or upgrade to the all new Ubuntu 21.10 Impish Indri. Starting off with the user interface, Ubuntu 20.10 gets the much awaited GNOME 40. The desktop is super clean and at first look is uniform to the standard Ubuntu experience. But it's the newest GNOME desktop with the newest of everything. We get streamlined horizontal workspaces. These look really elegant and feel smoother to use. You can switch between applications, move between workspaces, drag and drop apps into new workspaces. These horizontal workspaces feel so natural when compared to the old vertical ones. We also get a much deeper sense of organization when using many applications here. Then the application grid is integrated into the workspace switcher. This application grid is very customizable. You can directly rearrange the application icons here by dragging and dropping them. Finally, then you can also create baskets to either organize similar apps or to store away unused apps. The new gestures are the shining stars of GNOME 40. If you're using a laptop, you use three finger swipes sideways on the touchpad to switch between workspaces or summon the activities overview with three finger swipe upwards. It feels so natural to swipe with your fingers like that and see the response on the screen. Using your computer like this, it comes so instinctively and is definitely smoother and more convenient. The theme feels a bit more premium compared to 20.04. You can see there are polishing touches here and there. By default, the application theme is light but the shell theme is dark. Of course, you can change this in the settings. Overall, I liked how Ubuntu has implemented GNOME 40 here. I knew there would be that touch of Ubuntu and it is here. Even with GNOME 40, Ubuntu 20.10 still feels very close to that Ubuntu desktop experience and long time users will feel just at home here. Top points. Coming back to Ubuntu 20.04. This is the tried and tested GNOME 3 desktop at its peak here. The desktop is very mature with best in class functionality and performance. The desktop here is very similar to the newer one except for the application grid and workspace switcher. Here we get vertical workspaces. The application grid is a different fragment here which is kinda cool too. Sure, GNOME 40 is supposed to be better than GNOME 3 and it is. But GNOME 3.36 is in no way objectively inferior in any meaningful sense. This is a solid desktop environment that delivers amazing performance while also being very stable and good looking. I personally use this. Applications, how you use the system, various settings and all the other things are similar on both the systems. While there are differences between the user interfaces of Ubuntu 20.10 and 20.04, these differences by themselves do not let us choose one system over the other. So I'll give both a point each. But the differences we see next are much more consequential and important in choosing the version that's best for you. Ubuntu 20.04 LTS is a long-term support version that will be supported till 2025. Ubuntu 21.10 is an interim release supported for the next 9 months. Although 21.10 is as usable as 20.04, this difference in life cycle manifests into huge differences between these two systems. LTS versions are always more polished and bug-free than interim releases because they are around for a much longer time. The packages here are tested more thoroughly and more optimized. This leads to better software stability on LTS versions. 
Interim releases on the other hand give you a fresher experience as they contain packages that are newer. They give you an updated experience. Non-LTS versions have a shorter life cycle so newer packages are used and everything gets updated every 6 months. Throughout the system, you get newer tech and a more feature-rich experience. But with Snaps, this is changing. As the latest version of software is packaged directly by the software vendors and the same package is distributed on all the Linux distros. LTS releases are very low maintenance. You can install it and forget about it. How things work, the user interface, they'll all remain the same for a very long time and there's a very small chance of things breaking. With non-LTS releases, you need to update the entire system every 6 months. While this is supposed to be mostly risk-free, there is a small chance of breakage. Having said that, I'll let you decide which version you should be using. If you're an enthusiast and want to have the latest Ubuntu experience, go with 21.10 without question. But if you are a developer or have critical computing needs, then absolutely go with 20.04 LTS. LTS is more stable and dependable while non-LTS gets newer features and software versions. There's a trade-off. Newer packages for stability. You choose. With 21.10, you'll need to update when the next version of Ubuntu comes out. With 20.04, you can update or go another 3 years without needing to update anything. 20.04 gets the stability point and this one aspect will be the decider for most people. Ubuntu 20.04 LTS came out as the culmination of host of performance improvements. Ubuntu under the hood had been optimized to be very efficient at pretty much everything and at the same time, GNOME developers also pushed out major performance improvements like efficient GPU memory caching for much better desktop responsiveness. All these things made Ubuntu 20.04 a performance powerhouse when compared to the LTS that preceded it. And now, Ubuntu 21.10.2 is exceptional in terms of performance. It matches 20.04 in speed, but it doesn't surpass it. Both are very good for gaming. Nvidia users will especially notice a very good gaming performance because of the significantly improved 470 drivers. In all the areas, Ubuntu delivers an optimized performance. Yeah, both the versions are identical in terms of speed across a variety of tasks and hardware. For performance, both the versions get a point each. Out of all the Linux distributions, Ubuntu has the highest support from software vendors. Almost any software created for Linux will be available for installation on Ubuntu in a quick, convenient and trustworthy way. This advantage of Ubuntu cannot be stressed enough. Both the Ubuntu versions have great software availability. For native .deb packages, 21.10 will have higher version numbers of software in its repositories than 20.04. 20.04 is more stability oriented, so the software are tested more thoroughly than the non-LTS versions. And now, with Ubuntu prioritizing snaps heavily, the pool of software available here has grown significantly. Many big software vendors are bringing their software to Linux only in snap format and only because there is a snap format. And with snaps, there's no waiting. The latest versions of packages will be available immediately after release. The same package will be installable on both Ubuntu 20.10 and 20.04. Overall, software availability and the ease of getting software is leading standard in both these versions. Gaming is another area where Ubuntu excels. Both versions of Ubuntu are fantastic in this area. There are a good number of free games available on the software store across a wide range of categories. I personally love playing Zero AD and Nexus. Then there's Steam. Here you'll find many top games for Linux and with Steam's Proton feature, you can play thousands of Windows exclusive games on Linux. Once you enable Steam Play from the settings, you can install Windows games on Linux with a single click. They install and run like they are Linux native. AAA titles like The Witcher 3, Doom, GTA 5, Dark Souls 3 run flawlessly on Linux. And many more games like Cyberpunk 2077 are improving. Proton has revolutionized gaming on Linux. With Nvidia improving their drivers for Linux significantly, you get amazing performance with Nvidia 470 drivers available on both versions of Ubuntu. All in all, gaming on both versions of Ubuntu is just fantastic. Better than ever thanks to Steam. Both versions of Ubuntu have the same simple and straightforward installation. 
Even the most complex operations are represented in an easy to understand and beginner friendly way. You can install them both in under 15 minutes. And if you need any help installing Ubuntu, the link to the step by step guide video is given in the description below. And now, they both automatically install the latest drivers for Nvidia GPUs. AMD drivers are pre-installed too. Both the versions have a very quick and hassle-free installation procedure and they both get a point each for that. Ubuntu has one of the best documentations and any issues you might face are easily solved by following the beginner-friendly guides on the Ask Ubuntu forums. The community is very friendly and the solutions are highly accessible and easy to follow. And even if you have a question that is not already answered, community members prove to be very helpful. The community is one of the biggest strengths of Ubuntu. And for Linux newcomers, this is a huge advantage. The online guides and the how-tos of an LTS version are much richer than the non-LTS versions. This is because the package versions of the LTS versions are around for a long time for proper documentation and troubleshooting guides to be written around them. This means solving issues and troubleshooting in general is easier and convenient on Ubuntu 20.04 than 21.10. So the community support point goes to Ubuntu 20.04. Personally speaking, I need something very stable and dependable for my development work. So I always prefer to use an LTS version as my work distro. But that's just my situation. For general home use, I would prefer to use a non-LTS as it brings the newer technologies in the Linux world while also being dependable. A person with long-term computational needs cannot just use a non-LTS. The points we awarded actually don't make a lot of sense in this comparison. Sure, the winner, that is 20.04 LTS version, is suitable for 90% of people. But many people might also find the newer 21.10 more appealing. So it completely boils down to the user's preference itself. It's stability versus state-of-the-art computing experience. On 21.10, you get the latest Linux kernel, the latest user interface and the latest technology out there. On 20.04, you get stability, which can be invaluable. My personal point today is a tie, but by the total tally of points, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS wins by a good margin. And with that, we have all the aspects of LTS versus non-LTS out in the open compared clearly. And I hope these things will help you pick the one that's best for you. The download link for both these versions is in the description below. Next up, check out the top 20 things you must do after installing Ubuntu. If you enjoyed this video, do consider subscribing to my channel. Well that's it for today. This is Linux Techs signing out.